Portland's form of government is going to change big time in about a year and a half. But until then, the mayor and the four commissioners have a huge impact on what happens throughout the city and especially here in downtown. And that's why I wanted to talk to City Commissioner Dan Ryan to get his vision for the future of downtown. Thanks for making time to talk with me. Absolutely. Picked great weather, Pat. Yeah. 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 Uh, what do you think about the future of arts in downtown? Well, it's essential. I yeah. mean, we, we all know it's about activating downtown spaces. It's a beautiful day. And right now on this block, we're the only ones on it. I know. And we'd like, well, sorry, there's some people over there. Yeah. But we would really love to um, see downtown Portland activated morning, noon, and night. Yeah. It and used to be busy. It did. And arts has always been that activator of, of activity in downtown, especially on evenings and weekends. And so you see, I know when I go out uh, to arts events, it's really awesome to just see so many people out. Yeah. Um, but afterwards, you want to find a restaurant that's open. And, you know, we just have to keep um, getting our, the, the currency flowing downtown. And really, arts is a main activator of that. Well, and we hear from viewers who say... And I always like to add music film so it's not you know yeah, arts it's a big umbrella it's arts. a big ecosystem absolutely but we hear from viewers who some say they used to love to come down here now they won't at night because they're afraid or some won't at all how do you get over that yeah well that's where everything's all connected so the focused work that we're doing on community safety i mean when you hear from arts organizations why their patrons aren't renewing their subscriptions yeah. or why they're not coming back it's the same complaints you hear from small businesses the same that you hear from those who can't lease out their office spaces. It's it really is about community safety. We're seeing some improvements. Uh, I can say the coordination within the city is much better than it used to be. I see more cooperation between police and the community safety uh, system that is under Mike Myers. And so there's just better coordination. The people at Clean and Safe, the the different communities coming together to be a part of that system. The park rangers, you know, they're all a part of the community safety system. Do you feel safe downtown? I do. And one reason I feel safe is maybe because I lived in New York in the 80s, maybe because I can still run. Um, if <laughs> but, I'm sure you can, but that yeah. should not be. Well, I'm just what, being what honest, like that's one that. reason I feel safe. Yeah. So yeah. when I listen to my friends who are elders or have disabilities, and when they tell me they don't feel safe, that's who I'm advocating for. Yeah, and that's back problem. to why people feel safe in numbers. So, so the activation of our streets is a safety issue. So once it's it's like a chicken and egg. So the same people that are afraid to come downtown, I beg of them to give it a shot. It's actually much nicer down here than people realize. And um, I'm hearing from more and more people that when they finally do come downtown and go to the symphony again, go to the theater again. When you saw the people that were at the opening for the Northwest Children's Theater, all the families and children that are going to be activating that space morning, noon, and night, um, you know, th there's a joy just when people start coming back on the streets together. And we have Rose Festival coming up, which is going to really help, too. That'll be great. Yeah. What about city workers? We hear people saying, how come the city workers aren't back in their buildings and filling downtown? Yeah, I think uh, what I'm, I mean, our office has been back in person for so long, I forget about that sometimes. And increasingly, we, we ask all of our meetings to be in person. Um, we're finding, obviously, a lot of our city workers have never gone home because they're directly serving the public. Okay. And I know we're making headway on that. Um, I think we'll have a rollout soon. Of, well, like, I think the Portland City Building is pretty empty, isn't it? Um, it's, there's supposed, I mean, at least one or two days a week is what I'm hearing from most people over there. Yeah. But it's, it's going to be going up. But why can't you just say five days a week? There's um, negotiations that are taking place um, with uh, the labor partners. So about there's unions involved? And of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's just how it works. Mm -hmm. Do you get um, the frustration of Portlanders? I'm sure you do, because we hear it. I'm sure you hear it more than I do. Oh, never. <laughs> <laughs> but people are like, all this money and all these problems yeah. remain. I think there's fatigue, and I understand it. I hear the frustration morning, noon, and night. I mean, I can't go to the gym. I can't go to Mass on Sunday. I can't go to New Seasons. Uh, you know, these are just a few examples where yeah. I don't hear from people or get interesting eyes from constituents. Yeah. Um, so I'm well aware that I signed up to be part of the solution and I'm working my tail off with with partners all across government and nonprofits and um, private sector uh, to keep building and so 
our best days are going to come if, in fact, Portlanders dig in and actually want to be part of the solution together. The blame game's got to end. We got to really be resilient as a city, as a collective, and have some shared accountability in all this. When it comes to talking about downtown and its future, we also want to take a look at what's working and why. When we come back, we'll see what's still bringing the crowds to downtown Portland.